Hey y'all, hey y'all, can y'all hear me? Can you hear me, can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me, you can hear me? Yes, people on Facebook, can you hear me? Thank you guys for tuning in, my pastor's here. Thank you for coming in tonight. Uh, thank y'all for coming in, it's been one roller coaster today. When my computer went down on me, didn't want to, didn't want me to log on or anything. So this must be going to be some good talking tonight. I'm excited. Are y'all excited? Y'all excited? Well, for those that don't know me, for those on Facebook that don't know me, I am Dr. Toya Spencer. I am a preacher, teacher, prophetic intercessor. I am the director over intercessor for prayer redemption church. Shout out to my pastor. Pastors, Pastor Devin and Samantha Westbrook. Woo! Those are my pastor, best church on this side of town. You know, no offense, Pastor Courtney, but that's that's my church. That's my church. <laughs> so we just want to jump on in. This is just going to be interactive. Ask your questions that you're going to answer, uh, that you need to be answered. We're going to be as real as possible. You know, most of us are in ministry, but we're going to be real because we still we are still real people. We still have real issues. We still have proclivities, issues, and everything, just like a normal person. We just decided to make our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you know, our Savior. And we decided to be, you know, uh, used by him. So we still have the same you know, issues that you have. So without further ado, I want to introduce my, uh, well, first, before, we actually start, before I introduce my uh, panelists, I got a quick icebreaker that I want my listeners to do. Uh, please comment, make your comments, make your comments. Uh, please comment your relationship status, just like you're on Facebook, you're single, you're married, you're divorced, or you're complicated. And your complicated might be whatever your complicated is, but we want to know, we want to know if we have majority single, millennial, single, older, divorced, married, whatever, or it's complicated, separated. So make sure you just put it in your uh, comment boxes on the uh, live for me. And we will definitely really appreciate it. Any questions you got, make sure you uh, click like and share and make sure you put your comments on any questions that, uh, that you might have for our panelists to answer because I'm just the host. I'm not going to answer any questions. So I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just kidding. I might answer a few questions, you know, just, just a few, but I put y'all in the hot seat. Okay. Okay. So first and foremost, I want uh, you guys to put your hands together for my panelists on today. I really appreciate them taking time out on their busy Sunday just to log on and talk about dating, the game of dating. I know most people thought it was that, like that old uh, dating game uh, sitcom that used to come on TV. Daria, you might be too young, but you know, back in the day when we was young, you know, it used to be a game show called the dating game. <laughs> so, you know, I'm kind of telling my age, but you know, hey, I grow old gracefully. How about that? It's a blessing growing old. <laughs> but anyway, so I want to introduce uh, to y'all uh, my panelists on tonight. I have Pastor Courtney Settle. I have uh, Minister Latasha Lee Dillard. I have my best friend, Tiffany Sarita, one of my best friends, Tiffany Sarita. And I have uh, Darielle Neely. So what I want you guys to do, uh, Pastor Courtney first, I want you to introduce yourself. Just introduce yourself and tell the people uh, about your ministry, about uh, what you do, okay? Well, um, of course you told you my name, Pastor Courtney Settle. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a barber, uh, I own a barber shop. Uh, also, I am the proud pastor of the Spirit of Christ Church, which is the place of worship. We believe in one God, one worship, one vision. I know she said her pastor is the greatest pastor on that That's side, the but when you come on the other side, I'm the greatest on this side, but I love her past also giving on to them. And uh, but uh, I'm I'm a 40, I'll be 42 in June, June 19th. Uh three beautiful daughters. Um and uh, you know, I'm single, uh never been married, and uh hey, 
just uh, I'm looking forward to this and I'm excited about what uh, we're able to share uh, our experiences and even uh, spiritual, even naturally, that I believe God is going to be a blessing to those that's, that's tuning in and uh, mm -hmm. listening and watching. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you taking time out, Pastor Courtney, uh, just to be on this panel. I know you're uh, the only man on us all women panel, but you're going to hold your own. You know what I'm saying? You, you good. You good for it. So I know. <laughs> so I'm going to go to uh, Minister Latasha Lee Dillard. Hey, girl. Salutations. How you doing? Hey, Dr. Toya, um, a couple of comments said that they can't see the video from your page because it's, uh, it's saying something about a private group. So just wanted to tell you that. They can't but, see my page? They, they said they can't see the video from my page when I shared it. They said it's saying something about private group. Mm. You got to make sure your private is uh your page is unprivate or okay let me do that hold on public there you, there you go okay thank you because I thought it was public usually I, I make everything public all so. right all right Saturday right. Saturday greetings everybody uh I am Minister Latasha Lee Dillard uh I am a wife a mother entrepreneur employee um an advocate for change, youth, and domestic violence. I do a little bit of everything. Um, I used to be a master of many things. Um, no, I used to be great at many things, a master at none. Now I have mastered <laughs> many things. <laughs> so I love to have fun, love God, love his people, and uh, I am excited about tonight. I am. Thank you for having me, Dr. Dr. Toy. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. I appreciate you having the, uh, accepting the invitation. We're gonna move on to the millennial of the group, Darielle Neely. Hey, Darielle. Hi, my name is Darielle. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I am the millennial on the panel. I'm 23 years old. Um, I'm currently a graduate student now um, at Union University. Um, and so I'm just currently working as well as a residency doing community development work. And, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share what wisdom I do have um, at 23 years old, and I'm equally as, as excited to learn. So thank you for having me, Dr. Toya. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate you as well accepting this uh, this invitation. So we're gonna we're gonna go to the last panelist, which is uh, Tiffany Sarita, one one of my good friends. So Tiffany, can you unmute yourself and uh, introduce yourself? Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you, Dr. Toya, for having us on. And I am a mother of seven, a grandmother of five. That's under. That's one and under. Um, I Let's am. Got another one on the way. With another one on the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're trying to catch up to my number seven. I am <laughs> a. I'm so proud of them, though. You know, I have married and single and millennial within there. I've been married 22 years. And I am a serial entrepreneur um, and I work in ministry as well. And shout out to my pastor, Kia Moore, the church at the well, uh, for everybody coming in tonight. And I'm looking forward to the conversation that we'll have tonight. All right. Thank you, Tiffany. Well, we're going to get this ball rolling. Did anybody, let me see, I'm looking on Facebook. Nobody commented on their, their statuses. Can I get people to come in on their status so we can see what we got here? I got one married, single, brothers on here. My dad's on here, so you know, they, you know they married, so they married. So I got a couple of married, couple of singles. So my pastor's on here, they married. So anyway, so we're gonna just jump on in and just start off with the question. So we're gonna start off with Minister Tasha on tonight. <laughs> so Tasha, I want you to I want you to share your testimony. I know you did it last year at my beautifully flawed event, but I want you to share share your partially your testimony about uh, what you overcame before actually you have uh, got you know you got hitched. So just just uh, let everybody know about your testimony if you don't mind. Don't mind at all. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, my name is Lucasha Um I have actually overcame so much domestic violence, uh, rape, molestation, and abuse. Um, so domestic violence was one of the things that really kind of carried over 
um, while I was going through domestic violence um, with one of my son's father, uh, I encountered rape. Um, so that kind of triggered a whole lot and, and I kind of lost my identity for about 10, 10 years. Uh, so on that first 10 years, um, I was gone mentally, physically, spiritually, um, gone. I was on drugs, um, alcoholic, um, partying, kicking it all while being a young adult mother, uh, single mother. So I kind of hit rock bottom, uh, lost everything. I was homeless, um, 2007. That was kind of like the turnaround year, seven being the number of completion. That's when things kind of changed. So from the age of 19, um, so I think I was about 30, that was like a long stretch because um, I en encountered so much trauma. Um, and that, that to me, I consider that th those were my, my 40 days in the wilderness experience um, where God had to teach me some things and show me some things. And I had to learn about my identity, my identity as a woman, my identity in Christ, um, who I was in ministry. Um, I always tell the story of Jonah. I kind of ran when God called me into ministry because I didn't want to play ministry. I didn't want to do ministry as I saw so many people doing. Um, and I just believe that the mantle that was on my life, uh, was, I felt like it was too heavy for me to actually live it out. So to go through domestic violence, rape, abuse, uh, being a single mother, being homeless, uh, drugs and alcohol, um, I just had an addictive behavior to trauma. So um, in that, uh, there was a point in 2007 when I was just tired. I was living a, a lesbian lifestyle and I was just tired. I was just, I was absolutely tired of everything in life. And so I just Gave, got a yes, and, and I packed my, my, my bags and got in my car, and I had $40, put 20, uh, 40 in the tank, I mean, and I had 20 in my pocket, and I left Memphis um, to find myself, to find me, and um, in 2007, we ended up in Murray, Kentucky, and that's where the shift began in my life, and um, I shifted from focusing on looking for love in all the wrong places to loving Tasha and finding out who Tasha was and what Tasha liked and what Tasha didn't like and what being whole and being kept rid of me. So, so I, that, that's where the journey for singleness actually started, uh, being whole. And so I was married. Uh, my husband and I got together seven years ago. And so we've been married four years next month. Wow, wow. So Tasha, I got a question for now. You in ministry, right? Yeah. So, but however, your husband is not. So wow. tell me, how do you balance marriage and ministry and how do you make it work? Uh, the balance is simply um, know the order. Uh, honestly, God is it, God, God is first. My husband, um, and, and when, in, the, in the scripture where it tells us that we have to submit one to another, then honestly, what we do and how we do it. Uh, one of the things that I think I wrestled with at first was, um, and, and I can, I'm being transparent when I say this, we didn't follow, we didn't follow the rules of the Bible uh, when we were dating. You know, uh, the part of being kept, I, I, I failed. And I felt so bad because I had been keeping myself and then I failed and then I kept myself again and then I failed. And then it was like, okay, Lord, wait a minute. You know, I'm struggling in this uh, lust area. You know, mm -hmm. I'm struggling in this sex area. I need you to keep me uh, while while we dating. So a lot happened, and I ended up we moved in, and we were shacking. And I was just it, a strong sense of depression hit me, and I kept telling him that I couldn't, we couldn't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the living together part for, for us that was the problem. The problem was the sex part. So my husband took it upon himself, who, you know, at that time, he called us on that, that front and said, we weren't going to have sex no more until we got married. So for- oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. You say your husband called you out on that? My husband called me oh, out on that. Wow. Now he that's said, impressive. Now most men ain't going to call you out on that and tell you that. Oh, he, <laughs> but that, that he was, said, the, wow. Yeah. So he, he called it out and said- that he wouldn't be the reason that I wasn't pleasing God. 
Mm. So he loved me in the ministry that I had that God called me to uh, more than he did our sex. Mm. And so that was vital for me because I saw then how much he honestly and truly loved God. Wow. So it wasn't about him going to church. Right. My prayer when I first started praying about a man because I honestly thought I would always be with a pastor. Because that's what everybody prophesied to me. You're going to be a first lady of a church, and y'all going to have this in it. So I honestly thought going into marriage, I was going to be a, a first lady somewhere. <laughs> but, you know I, mean? I don't even want that uh, pass either. <laughs> but in, in, in lieu of it, that's how we got started, and he honored that with God. And so once we got married, um, I didn't try to force him into going to church with me all the time because I, I knew what his, his prayer life looked like. Of. I knew what his relationship was with God, but I knew what his experience was with the church. Mm. So that was important for me, his experience with the church. So I wanted him to be able to make the decision for us um, where we would go to church together. And so I, I followed the journey and, and it led, led us back to my home church, which was Riverside. And right. so I don't force, try to force him into ministry because we got to a hard place. We had to go to counseling. And one of the things that she, she uh, reminded me is, have you had a conversation about where, what area he feels that he's called to? And when I realized his area of ministry was in the classroom and on the football field, mm. I could understand where his calling is and where mine is. And that's how we balance that. We support each other in our own ministry. Wow. So his ministry is not in the pulpit. But his ministry is in the classroom with the students and on the field with his, his players. Wow, that's interesting because most of the time, like like you said, like that's all I've been getting prophecy to. You're gonna be, you're gonna marry a pastor. You're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have uh, a ministry. You're gonna be a first lady. You're gonna be this. You're gonna be that. I've heard that. It's all I mean, since I've been saved. So you know that's oh. how, that's what I'd be looking for. So I'll be like. Yeah, you're a pastor. Yeah. You're a pastor. Yeah. <laughs> you, well, we, 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 we was looking at their hands when they came through the church door. Right, like, right, right, right. Right. Be like, wait a minute. Oh, he married. He, uh, uh-uh. that ain't I, it. He, right. he ain't my pastor. He ain't my pastor. So, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> right. that, that ain't mine. That ain't mine. That's somebody else's. So, what, what the other pastor, Lord? Give me the pastor that you say is for me. That's what I want to know. <laughs> right. 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 So, I got another question. So does so does dating stop when you get married? No, that's the that's the plus in it. Like we, one of the things I absolutely love, y'all will see hashtag team build it everywhere, like, right? Because we love to date. You know, that was that was my my number one thing that I learned from uh, the matrons ministry years ago and women's ministry years ago. Um, the women who have been married. 25, 30, 40 plus years, they always tell us, give us, give us that wisdom. Don't stop courting. Don't stop dating. You know, don't, 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 don't get in the bed every night with your rollers in your hair. Don't, don't go to bed slightly ugly and with your pajamas on. You know, mm-hmm. the, the advice of the elders will always say, if you can't get to a restaurant, you create your atmosphere at home. So mm-hmm. those kind of things kept us and we decided, and we used to date maybe three or four times a week. But mm. then when school started, we both work in the school system. So it's kind of like now we have to plan our date. Right. So yeah, we still dating. And it's, we've been dating for seven years, and we're going to continue to keep dating. Oh, yeah. Because so it's important. Look, look. Dancing, whether you're dancing around the house, whether you're dancing, going out. I, I, used, to, I used to think, oh, my God, if, if church people see us, you know, at this certain spot. But I remember I'm with my husband. Like, I ain't dropping it like it's hot. I ain't around here, you know, doing this and another. I'm carrying myself with, with class. I'm carrying myself with, with grace and wisdom. But I'm with my husband. I'm also on a date. So it's okay for me to date and be sassy and sexy with my husband. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. You can't be sloppy and nothing with your husband. He ain't going to want that. And you be sassy and cute with, when you are away from him. You, he going to have problems with that. Right. <laughs> Everything walk around, classy, ratchet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta keep his attention over here, not over here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes you gotta get a little, he might want you to get a little ratchet. You don't, but do what you gotta do. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 
You got the club club husband. Club eighteen seventy eight is in here for. <laughs> so another question: Do you know your partner's love language? Yes, and that was one of the most important things to me because uh, I'm an extrovert. He's an introvert. I love I love physical touch. Um, mm -hmm. I love gifts. Um, his definition of, of intimacy is, is it was completely different. So one of the rough spots that we hit was because we communicated our love completely different. Mm -hmm. And so when we went to a session, and that that was the, um, the the advice that they gave us was to read the book and to take the assessment. And that's how we started honestly dating even the more because um, we 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 found that we were so different. My dominant uh, my dominant was touch, you know. Physical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to be up under you. I want I want to rub my feet, massage my head. I want all of that. But his intimacy, his touch is different. He could just be holding my hand, and that's enough. Mm -hmm. That's enough showing love um, to him. So we had to learn how to communicate and talk to each other about our love languages. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, in the midst of this pandemic, I've, I've I've watched a lot of pastors teach that, and I think that that's a definite plus because even I have the book for teenagers mm. love for them to learn early because we need to talk about what love languages look like even with our youth so that they'll know what healthy relationships include mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's right that's true that's true because I've read it uh I even got the uh the five love needs I don't know if y'all can see that my thing five love needs for men and women mm -hmm. I had to read this in one of my ministry classes but uh, this is actually re really good. It's by the same people uh, mm -hmm. that usually do the love language anyway. So, but it's 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 good to know your partner, even in your dating. You know, even when you're dating, to know your love language because you thinking you giving because you're you're buying stuff and you're 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 providing stuff materialistic that you're you're showing love. That's your way of showing love. But your partner is like. I need something else. I need some QT. I need some, I need you to rub my feet. I need you to do something. But if you're not actually uh, knowing your partner's love language, you're going to miss it. And then your relationship is just going to go downhill. And it's just and something that could have been fixed in the beginning. Right? That's important for men and women. Not right. just for women to learn. It's for men and women, and women. to learn mm -hmm. about the five love languages. One of the things that I, I would always suggest is that when I was single, I started going to marriage conferences mm -hmm. because I wanted to learn from married couples. I wanted to learn as much wisdom and knowledge as I could so that I could operate in a capacity that I'm already a wife. Right. Because I, want, I wanted to be a wife. I didn't want to be a girlfriend anymore. I was tired of yes. being a girlfriend enough. Right. So I wanted to be a wife. And so I, in order for me to get the knowledge that I needed, I wanted to be in good, healthy places. So I, I started putting myself in those places. And so when my husband and I first got married, that first Sunday we were married, he said, oh, we can finally go to marriage ministry together. Like that was so, that turned me off. So that was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so it's like to know that the desire wasn't just there for me, but for him as well. Mm -hmm. So to keep that flame going, we got to keep educating ourselves what healthy marriages look like and what do you do when you hit a rough spot. Right, right, right. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Now, I know you are, you know, a strong alpha woman. So my question is, is how do you continue to be the alpha woman <gasps> and not overstep or, or make your husband feel inferior of you? Um, one of the things I had to learn, I have to learn to be slow to speak and swift to hear. I want to hear what he's saying, even when he's not saying anything. Like, um, and I learned how to, I used to be so vocal about everything. Like, are oh, you going to hear what I got to say? You know, coming from domestic violence, coming from abuse, mm -hmm. you know, you, there was residue in areas because I was so used to arguing and fighting all the time. But to be with some, we've been together seven years, and in seven years, we've had two and a half uh, heated discussions. Mm -hmm. Because that's not how to communicate. It's easy to sit down and talk about it. But for me, I was, you know, hey, let's get it. Let's say what we say, what you mean, mean what you say. Let's just say it. And 
I had to learn how to have that discussion and dialogue with him, not fussing at him, not nagging at him, but just um, hearing what he has to say and then think about, okay, he didn't do this. He didn't say this. Then I go back and say, hey, this is, this is how this made me feel. But is this what you meant by what you said? Because this is how I perceive it. Uh, one of the things, and it was hard for me for submission and leadership growing up because I thought um, submission was like slavery and a, a mental and controlling of the mind. But being married to him, he made it so simple to follow his lead because it, he, he didn't force everything on me. He, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a communicator. He's a talker. He's an analyst. Uh, he's an introvert. But when he said he says what he means, and he, he's kind of over. So I listen to what he said because he's going to say exactly how he feels. And, and I translate that and take that and apply it in into our life because communication, effective communication is key. So I learned how to effectively communicate with him, not in the same manner that I used to communicate with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And what everybody else likes, he may not like. So I had to find out what worked for our house. Um, you know, for, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So mm -hmm. I had, I couldn't come in. Oh, you're going to do this. Oh, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna pray with me for five hours. Oh, you gonna, I couldn't come in like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that's what I was used to. Oh, you're going to get up at three o'clock in the morning with me. No, I had to honestly do what I do, create a space for me and allow him to be the man of the house. Um, and one of the things I learned when we went to counseling, like I, I didn't say a lot. I allowed him to speak first so that I could honestly learn how he felt or what he felt when he wasn't saying it to me, when he said it to somebody else. Mm. So. Okay, I got a question. I know you uh, the segue the well segue to uh, uh, domestic abuse. Uh -huh. What are some of the red flags? Can you give our viewers some red flags of domestic abuse, like what to look for in the in a man and a woman? Because men get uh, abused as well. So, can you give mm -hmm. our viewers any red flags that that could prevent them from being in a, a domestic abuse situation? Uh, everything is great. They, they're buying you everything. They're doing everything for you. Uh, they're observe, uh, absorbing all of your time, all of your attention. They're pulling you away from all of your, your circles, your friends, your family, uh, your church, your love for church. Um, they're trying to replace themselves in, in, in a position for everybody else's space in your, in your life. Mm. Um, the, red flag, the way that they speak towards you, the way that they speak towards their mother, the way that they speak towards the women in their life, mm -hmm. uh, tend to show you how they're going to eventually speak to you. Um, the way red flags with your children, um, mm -hmm. do, do they put themselves first? Um, do they always want everything about them um, and their family, their life, their children, and they want your children to be on the back burner? Um, red flags, of course, is if they're going through your phone, all the time, if they're scrolling your social media all the time, uh, trying to control who you talk to, who you interact with, engage with, mm -hmm. those are signs. Um, it, if if they always, if they're always watching violence, mm. most people don't pick up that. But if they, if that's all that person is watching, that's that's all that's getting into their spirit. Mm. That's, that's fighting. That's negative. If everything about what they do is negative. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten, they're traumatized from something, and they don't know how to to uh, remove themselves from their past. Um, we we can say, oh, I can help them change all day, but if they don't want to change, they're not going to change. You right. know, and if they if they start with good squeeze or a choke or you know they slap, and then eventually it's going to be, look what you made me do, mm -hmm. and uh, and they push the blame. Everything is you did this, you did this. You know, you watch for those that that those communi kind of communication uh, factors is that blame factor. That's definitely a red flag. What about, um, I don't know if you experienced this, but like in the sexual uh, way, like if they're dominant, like they want to they want to be choked or they want to be handcuffed or, you know, anything like that. Is that like a sign for uh, an abusive or or? They like to be abused or whatever. And, and, and then that's another thing you have to even think about when, when 
if you if you're dating somebody and they're into dominant things or dominant sex, and mm-hmm. that's not something that you're into, um, and they're trying to force you into the anytime you're being forced to something, that's abuse. You know, so that's a violation of your rights. So whether you're dating them or whether you're married to them, a no simply means no. Mm-hmm. Like it, even if you're married and you don't want to have sex with your mate, if you say no, that's right. And mm-hmm. if they continue to force it. So those red flags of if 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 he's bringing in toys, he or she, and you don't want that in your in your bedroom, that's a red flag. Like because that's something that they're gonna want in their relationship or their marriage. And if you give it, if you're giving it to them now, they're gonna expect you to go even deeper mm. beyond that that, that 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 point. So you wanna make sure you look at those things and have those discussions prior to dating. Like what is it that you like? Mm-hmm. What you know in what 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 are those um what you, what you call them deal breakers. You know, if I if I walked in the bed bedroom and I saw a man with all this stuff, I'm I when I was single, I would have turned right on around and been like, you know what? Uh, that's a deal breaker, baby. We ain't gonna be able to do it. Sorry, <laughs> somebody else. Maybe there's some people who you can pay for that, but not mm-hmm. I got a question. One of the viewers want to ask: Is that are the signs of an of an abused woman different than an abusive man? You know, you know the answer to that. Are the signs? Well, you know, yeah, because gender, gender, gender communication is different. Um, our, our behavior is different, but most of the time, the symptoms are hand in hand, pretty much the same. With women, women, you could the mood swings, and if they go real nasty in between those mood swings, and they say uh, mean, mean and hurtful, demeaning words to you when they're upset, mm-hmm. that's, that's abusive behavior. Mm-hmm. That's abusive behavior. Women, you know, we 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 can be controlling. We can mm-hmm. be yes, we can. You know, we can be controlling and manipulative. We we can um kind of sabotage things, you know, for our mates so that they can just focus on us. So women can demonstrate those kind of behaviors as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, last question. Um, I've been seeing something like that's real puzzling to me. Um, most people are wearing their red and rings on their right hand instead of the left. You you wear it on your right? No, I okay, now. wait a minute, let me turn around. Okay. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> so what do you I mean I know I have researched this, but what what do you think that could be? Well me, uh, me honestly, uh I've 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 watched married couples not wear rings at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, watch married couples wear their ring on the left finger and still cheat. Um, I mean, I mean, to me, the significance of the ring shows that you made a vow to me. You made a vow to your wife. You made a vow to your husband. And this is supposed to be worn with you at all times. Um, so if you're wearing it on your right hand, you're simply telling somebody that to me, you're available. Mm-hmm. Like you know, I'm I'm available. It's we're in a, a, a ugly place. My, my husband, my wife, and I are in a really ugly place. Um, I'm at the point trying to leave him or her because if if it if it were not at that point, you you wouldn't mind wearing it on your left hand. Um, mm-hmm. But out of respect to your spouse, I I just believe all husbands and wives should wear 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 the ring on the right hand. On the on the on the right on hand the right or the hand. left the right left hand. The left, the left, the right hand, <laughs> the, the right hand is the left. But I understand what you mean. But it's, listen, when I did some research on that, okay. I, uh, it's a couple of things that stood out. They were saying that, and one of those reasons actually was what you said is that they're letting people know that they're open to cheat on their wives. They either open, uh, they're in an open relationship. They're telling people, oh, okay, I'm, I want to take you back to my wife. I want to take you back to my husband or whatever, whatever kind of thing. But that's what's going on. So also, it's also talking about um, when uh, homos- when lesbians 
And, you know, because we're, we're living in an age now that they can get married, right? Homosexuals, they can get married. So they prefer their ring on their right hand, just to let them know. Uh, that was interesting to me because I was looking at a lot of TikToks and, you know, because, you know, that's been my thing lately. That's my stress reliever, TikTok stuff. <laughs> so I even had to do some TikToks last night because I couldn't even sleep. So, so I've been seeing a lot of people, they be putting their hand up like this, you know, it's men and women. I'm be like, like yeah. I'm doing this in the mirror. Like I, I thought it was supposed to go on your left hand. You know, so, when she did her, then I say she did the right hand. That was that's it. Engagement. Did she do that? Did she do that? Yeah, she did do the right hand then. The Beyonce. Yeah, she said it's like she should have put a ring on it. She on the right. Maybe, maybe she in the open relationship. We don't know about but her and Jay Z. Right. You just okay. never know with that Illuminati. I mean, oh, I right, never mind. Well, so, and, see, and that's why we have to have these kind of conversations to educate our people. We can't follow everything that the world does. You cannot follow. You got to got to be real careful about this stuff. Yeah. 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 And that's why, you know, when we when you ask about this conversation, I'm like, yes, because we need to talk about relationships and slips and situations and, and all of that, because you need to know about all of that. But prior to saying I do, a lot of people want their wedding day. A lot of people want to get married. But if this is intentional work that has to be done every single day. Day, right. You know, and women, my, my, my whole thing to women today is this. Remember, you bring the favor to the man. Right. You don't right. have to chase him down when he finds you. He obtains <laughs> his favor. It's not the other way around. So, baby, when you know your worth, you ain't got to go looking for him. All you got to do is find you, be you, and love you when you know your identity in Christ. And you let God lead you, and he'll strategically put you in the right place at the right time your husband. My husband sent me an inbox in 2010, asked me to pray for him. That's how we started out. We went to high school together. I never knew him. Wow. Never. But he knew who I was. But in 2010, he asked me to pray for him. And here we are, 10 years later. I'm You're his wife. Married. The, very first, the very first phone conversation, he told me I was going to be his wife. I, I was like, boy, that. After, after prayer? No. Uh -huh. the, the, Look, we didn't talk on the phone from 2010 until 2013. Three whole years, baby. I played that. I love you, brother. <laughs> That's how I was sitting there. I'm praying for you, brother. Uh -oh. Yes, brother. My I brother in brother. <laughs> So for three years, that's all he got. And when the first phone call we had, we talked. And then we talked for some long hours. And at the end of that conversation, he said, Sasha Lee, you want to be my wife? I'm like, boy, baby. And he was nowhere near what I thought I was going to marry. Because mm. he was tall, he was see all this. Baby, you know, I love me some uh, uh, Ice Cube. Me yeah. with a little, uh, yeah, Ice Cube. I love Ice Cube. Now, listen, Ice Cube. And then I was crazy about what's my Rick Ross. I don't know what it was about me. Rose Rick like, Ross. yes. <laughs> 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 And so that's what I got to do. It's a little blended mix. So, you know, uh, you know, I always say somewhere uh, in between Proverbs 31 and trap music, there's me. So I needed somebody who could handle my personality. And so mm -hmm. he said me and he could. So women, know that you know your worth. You bring the flavor, you bring the flavor, flavor. You got 30, like Beth and Robert, they got 31 flavors. Baby, you got 31 flavors of favor. Make him mm -hmm. wait for you. Yeah, all right then, Tasha. I appreciate you. We, we're going on to the next segment. But yes, I appreciate all that good nuggets, all them good wisdom that you just uh just gave us. So just hang around. Don't go nowhere. So just yes, in case we have some more questions at the end, okay? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. All right. Thank you. You're so we're going to go ahead and we're going to enter into the uh, pastor, Pastor Courtney. You gonna go on and unmute, Pastor? We're gonna we're gonna uh, talk to you about being single, being a pastor. How is that actually for you? Is that difficult? Uh, yes. Um, I don't know where to start with this one. This kind of hard. So, um, it's difficult being a pastor because of the pressure 
and the things you encounter. Uh, when I first started out, I was like, yeah, I can do this. And, you know, I, I got it. And, and um, you know, I was focused and I didn't want anybody to interrupt what I was trying to do for God. Mm -hmm. But along the way, I, I realized that I couldn't do it alone because I went through uh, about three, two years of depression. Mm. And um, uh, actually, I got a daughter birthed out of the depression while I was pastoring. And um, I went through uh, setbacks. Uh, you know, I'm just being a long story. Well, touching on, I started drinking. I tried to smoke. Uh, and I thought about suicide because it got so difficult for me because I had so much pressure on my shoulders and I didn't have any outlet. And then the people I used to confide in and thinking that I'm trying to talk to them about my situation, they would be like, um, I have leaky mouths or it will go to a point where, you know, it will get back to me, the conversation. So I had to shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, even in, I mean, when I first started, man, I had people come to my church. I had this lady. She said, God sent her to my church. She was my uh, pulpit aide. And man, you know, I, I guess she was making advances toward me out of the wild. I didn't accept advances uh, toward, um, toward her. So, you know, she wrote this long letter like, uh, God, time's time for me to leave now. <laughs> my time is up. <laughs> and, and she was like, I was attracted to you, but I'm gone. Then I had another choir member get up and speak in tongues in the middle of choir rehearsal, walk out, storm out. It, was, it has been, I had people, and one thing I prided myself on when I first started, um, I didn't want to date nobody in my church or uh, connected to my church. So what I would do, I wouldn't date people, I wouldn't date women in the church, you know, because I feel like they act like they was too holy. They was, they always, uh, you know, someone running mouth too much. And so I was like, man, I came from the hood. So I said, man, I'd rather get me somebody in the street. So stuff I do, they keep it they self, but they ain't in the church world. So, so um, I went through that, uh, you know, so the story I went through there with my daughter, that was a rough time because I had old, older daughters that was uh, older and it was just me and them. So it was a rough time trying to bring that together. And they didn't, you know, women don't want to date. Y'all talking about y'all, I'm trying to see what y'all, what these women, they're talking about they want some pastors. Cause most women just, don't want no pastors. You just, you just had two of them that just told me. Y'all talking about women want pastors. <laughs> I'm like, what are they at? Because most women I run into, they like, uh-uh, I ain't trying to be nobody first lady. I'm like, man, you ain't trying to be my first lady. First, you got to date me, and then you may be my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I'm trying to look for a wife, not no first lady. I want a wife. Now, you're going to so happen to have a position. But I never look for a woman to say, hey, she's going to be my first lady. That never been my thing. I had come a woman come to me, but they not a, they haven't been like, you know, I'm like, listen, God, now you're going to send me somebody. Make sure she'll, if I'm a fall, Make sure she attracted to help me follow the right way. But, so I went through, it's been difficult because from the spiritual side, I didn't have nobody to pour back into me. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have nobody emotionally when I went through different times to kind of, you know, balance it out and to be able to relieve this stress uh, in Jesus' name. So, you know, uh, <laughs> these, I'm just being honest now, y'all, we, we on here. So I didn't have that. So it took me to a place where I got out of God's will, and then even trying to come back. One thing I love about my church, and I preach this gospel, I don't preach a, a perfect gospel. I preach that we all flawed in areas, but it's yeah, not an yeah. excuse to keep operating in that mind state of them and or in that kind of spiritual vein. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they accepted me and nobody really left. When I, I, I told them about my daughter, it took a while and uh, they love her. But uh, the thing is, it was because of lack of not having that woman can help me build ministry and mm -hmm. to uh to kind of uh you know having these women coming in out your ministry they say that you know god sent them over there and they when they don't get you god god told them to go somewhere else <laughs> so, <laughs> you know that's how you know and it's just it's it's they i'm telling you women down for some or maybe it's just and i think this now y'all can excuse me i think it's memphis i think if you a hot pastor and you single, they like it. Wait, wait, wait a minute, what you mean hot pastor? Like, you know, hot as in look? No, this is a hot bed. If you known or something, all the women want you. If you know all the uh, men want you, vice versa. Like, Myth is just built for this hot thing. Like, if you hot, if, if, if you, you could be married, they gonna want you. But if you're not known, this just a city, I'm telling you. If you're not known, they ain't gonna too much food. But as soon as you get known, your name, man, everybody come out the woodworks. And by that time, it's probably too late. <laughs> but, uh, so, 
I mean, that's that's my spiel on it. So dating is is difficult as a single path. I I've learned now to balance it out because I put a, a strong team around me. Uh, there's mostly women, you know, at church that can help. Um, they they kind of my god dog, so they kind of help me out, but being in a nice, nasty kind of way to make sure that we uh, I'm safeguarded. So I'm thankful now. But come on, we we can go farther. <laughs> Okay, so what is your your interview process? You already said that you don't like to date women that's in the church, right, pastor? <laughs> so you like to go to to the hood, go to uh the platinum plus and get your woman. Well, it's, it's not it's, <laughs> no, it's not per se in church. I mean, like she can have a spiritual side, but she need to have a little hood in her too. You know what I'm saying? We can listen to to Kurt Franklin, but we can also put a little dolphin in there too. You know what I'm saying? Young dolphin. You know, who, so, you know, who is dolphin? I, need, I need a person to, I need you to be able to tell me every now and then, hey man, listen, listen, now you went a little far, you know, in a nice way. And uh -huh. but also, baby, let's pray. Let's, you know, let's let's worship. You know what I'm saying? So you I need that balance. But uh -huh. in church, either it was too spiritual or it was too to the left. Uh -huh. And I'm a private person. I, like I told you, I'm shy. People don't think that, but I, I can get up and preach and I can teach. But man, I'm 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 a quiet person. I, I'm home. I'm alone. I don't hang out with a lot of people. And the re, and I'm gonna say this: the reason, probably why I have been married, I wasn't settled in who I was at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't believe. I don't believe in cheating. I don't believe that you should get married, um, uh, and then cheat on your spouse. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I want to be faithful. So I said, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to be single, I might as well live single and not toss my life up and then mess their life up. And then they can't recover from all of these kind of different things because I put them on them. So I know it ain't right now, but it's true. I just didn't want to be that person that married and then, you know, because I, I, I cut hair now. You got to realize I'm in a barbershop. So I hear all kind of stuff. And they talk to me about my angle. I'm, I told them tonight I'm going to break the code tonight. I'm going to get all the women the cheat codes tonight. Yeah, I'm listening so, too. Come and listen. Come on. I'm going to give all the cheat codes out tonight. <laughs> so they're going to they gonna, they gonna ban me. They're going to take my card away. But it's okay. But uh, I hear so many stories. And I tell my, the guys in the shop, some of them, they're they not safe. I tell hey, man, you know, treat your wife right, man. Respect your wife. I said, because if you deal bad with your wife, God's going to deal bad with you. You ain't got to be in church. The Bible is just what it is. Mm -hmm. So one thing I do honor and cherish is marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, people say, well, you know, and this is what my, 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 my barbershop friends tell me, well, how you going, how you going to eat meat every day? You, you're going to, you're going to get sick of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I talk, they say, I said, they say it's only so many ways you can cook chicken. I said, well, listen, chicken is cheap and it's safer. Mm -hmm. So I find some ways <laughs> to cook <laughs> plenty of ways. But, uh, uh, so, you go ahead. I'm just this was just my take on it. Oh no, that was pretty good. I was you, you was on the road. You kept on going. We listening. <laughs> okay. it, seemed, it seemed like you had a little amen with Mr. Lee back there. Yeah, Mr. Man, Josh was talking to, you know, about the, you know, a little bit of church and a little bit of hood. You know, yeah. you need a little bit of Meg to style you, you know, look, then you need a little yeah, bit of you like see, I'm like that. I need I need my woman to be able to wear some tights sometimes. I know you wear these <laughs> nice dresses. But every now and then, I need to see some of them liquid types. And you walking in front of me, I'll be like, yeah, girl, keep walking so somebody can look at it and be like, that's mine. I'm, let me go grab her. Yeah, this, <laughs> bless God. See, that's what I need. I, I need both the balance because why, I'm a, why I got to look at somebody else when I got some fine sitting right next to me? So wear you some nice little tights and work out clothes where we can work out together. I'm, I'm jogging behind you talking about, look at that thing. Yeah, look at God. God is good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm just telling y'all. So Man, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I won't bounce. And then I want her to be like, baby, listen, your eyes need to be focused right here. I need somebody to keep me in, in, in that place too because we need that balance. Yeah, I'm not right. so macho where I can't submit to my wife. You see what I'm saying? And I know men don't want to hear this, but it's the truth. We're supposed to submit to one another. And we're right. supposed to love. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're supposed to be the one to love. Uh, 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 and, and I'm saying this, but it, had to, it took time for me to grow because every relationship I got in, I always had to make sure I want to make my make sure my credit was good. My credit just stayed bad for years, y'all. It's good now, but <laughs> stayed bad for years. Oh, I'm had to work on going to school, or my church was almost my excuse, or my kids. So I was scared of commitment because mm -hmm. I'm scared that it wasn't I was gonna lose something. It was like what I miss. 
But after a while, I'm like, man, listen, now after this quarantine, y'all, man, she can come tomorrow. <laughs> I ain't gonna never be quarantined again for 30, 30, 30, 60 days. I'm like, she come to mom, like, Lord, here I am. I surrender all. all right. So, but listen, so it took me going through and, and really realizing that I it's okay to be not not complete. And I mean not complete, like you're not holding area, but com not complete that she'll be able to help balance you out of some areas that mm -hmm. she's able to help you get what she trying, you trying to go and vice versa. So, you know, I don't have to have everything together, but I do need to have the, the main things together. But mm -hmm. she would help, you know, and I had women in my life like this. Don't get this twisted. I've had women I should have married, but I didn't because I didn't feel like that I was ready. So, and, uh, you know, dating in church different because they act like it's a sin to date in church too, y'all. Mm -hmm. Man, you, well, you. Man, they act like it's a sin to date in church. I mean, and you wonder why all these these Christian babies run around here because <laughs> <laughs> we acting like it's a sin to date. You suppose we both? I get mad. I'm gonna say this. I promote this in my church. I promote dating in church. How you gonna get to know a person going from hey, how you doing, and now you walking down the aisle, and then you divorce? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You need to enjoy dating. Now, if you know that don't mean you talk to everybody in the church, but some some things are not gonna work out. So if it don't work out with Susan, that don't mean I can't talk to uh you know uh uh you know whoever the name is. Mm -hmm. Sarah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sarah. Mm -hmm. So I ain't gonna call one of y'all names. <laughs> Let me be like, oh he talking. To... So you know that's how church folk do. They can see you talking me, you and talking in church. We just having a regular conversation. Oh he talk. He trying to talk to everybody. I'm just friendly. You know. So we had this stigma in church that you don't supposed to date. And we and we don't talk about it. We don't talk about sex before marriage. We don't talk about you know. We don't talk about you know. All the people don't have sex. But what happens when I'm, I'm when I'm lonely? Yeah. When I preach, to, let me tell y'all something. When I get done preaching a good sermon, I gotta go lock myself in. Oh yeah. And I turn to the credible hope. Yeah. And I'm just being honest. So I don't want to take no phone call because if you come over, I'm just gonna be Lord forgive me. You know what I'm saying? But, right. But, we don't teach those things because we acting like that people are just spiritual and not fleshly. So we had to teach those things to tell people, hey, you're gonna get you're gonna get horny at times. And sometimes you're gonna get a look of, you know, uh, you know, run like yeah. a river. But at the end of the day, you must you must understand you got to have some kind of self-control and don't put yourself in a situation. But if you do fall, you learn how to get back up and keep it moving. Right. You know, uh, I heard her say, you know, she failed because some of us had a sex high high sex drive before we got married before, before you got married or, or you know before we got saved let me say this before you got saved you had a house so mm -hmm. it ain't gone nowhere mm -hmm. it's still there mm -hmm. you know and we keep acting like sex god created sex for marriage and he created sex for our enjoyment but mm -hmm. we just abuse it because it's good when it's good with the right person and sometimes it's good with the wrong person that's why we <laughs> get with the wrong people and you know so i'm just being honest y'all i'm sorry but uh, oh, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> I, I mean, you you're doing good. You with your honesty, I appreciate it. But I got a question now. Do you think dating someone that is separated, going through a divorce, is the same as dating a married man or woman? Physically no. uh, speaking well, or naturally speaking, depends on the situation. Uh, if she's divorced, of course not. Uh, if she's separated, it depends on how long she's been separated. I've dated people been separated seven years <laughs> and the person won't get them a divorce. So what are you supposed to do? This is a good person. They, they, you know, they out here, uh, you know, trying to do the right thing and the husband won't give them their paper. So they supposed to stop their life for the next 17 years. You know what I'm saying? No, I think it's okay to date if they're separated for now. Now I don't agree with it. If it's just, the first few months or you know the first year because what happens is you still have those emotions and feelings and people may go back you know what i'm saying because you know it happens and, and you know sometimes they fall out and then they fall back in and and and, and you don't want to be in this situation but i think it's a case basis by if they have been separated for a long time because really you can date them as long as you it's not a sin as long as you're not having sex if you have sex that's where the problem come in and that's for single people too Mm -hmm. So if I'm dating you and you separated and just say tomorrow 
God work because we may we can pray that thing down. He he got you locked up like uh like uh, what what was the story with Jacob? He had to work seven uh seven years and then fourteen years to get his wife. So look, we'll pray that thing down so he'll have to let you go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we got to lose you and let you go. So if it's meant for you, we can we can work through that. But if it's something in the beginning that's new, I don't think it's good because they they're not over emotion and it's not good. I, but I said long, and that's it. That's my take on it. Okay. I know you're working on a project. Uh, I know you told me. I don't know if you're still working on the project uh, of Soul Ties. So oh, yeah. um, can you tell our viewers, is Soul Ties really real and is it only sexual? Soul Ties. I, I, I'm working on a book called Untied, uh, which is talking about Soul Ties. And um, mostly from my perspective, it, it begins with women, women are emotional. And before most, the most real women, they don't, they're not gonna have sex with you unless they just, you know, some women like that until they get some kind of attachment, emotional attachment to you. Uh, they ain't just gonna give their body to anybody because they, 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 they understand what they have and the value on it. Men, we some of us slang that thing like, you know, whatever, for the going north. But I'm just being honest. So, so soul ties start with women emotion. With men, it starts physically. Two different things because we are physical beings. So we we touch and feel, you know, we, you know, and and and, and it's real, it's different for men and it's different for women. But once you make that connection and you start to have sex with them, you that's when a knot begins to happen. And the more that you have this sex, it begins, it's like you know, I remember when you were young. And your uh, mama used to tie your shoes up, and because you couldn't, you know, they kept coming loose. But she would tie this knot, mm -hmm. but then sometimes she tied a knot so tight that you had almost had to cut the shoelaces mm -hmm. and, and cut the string, or you got a string that you can't get it out. You can bit it. You tried to do everything, you had to cut it. That's most times what happened with soul ties. It has to be cut. You can't get it out no more because if you sleep with this person, you sleep with this person, your spirits enter to each person and you take on characteristics of each person and then you find yourself like the Loch Ness Monster or somebody crazy and you don't understand how you got there but you have to take the time to and, and I ain't gonna give y'all because y'all don't have to buy this book take the time to 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 detox we mm -hmm. detox everything in our life mm -hmm. I think before you get married you need a spiritual detox mm -hmm. you need to clean your spirit and I did it Clean your spirit with all the soul ties you encounter. You still messing with Craig. You still got Craig, and you wonder why you still want to pick up your husband's phone and knock his head out because Craig used to do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Or you wonder why you still talking crazy because you had Joe. He was doing it. So when you, but you need a time to spiritual detox to get all of those people out of your system. You still got some people still got people in their system from the, from the twelfth grade, mm. from past relationships and marriages. Yep. Because you keep compounding, you keep mm -hmm. adding to your spirit. Y'all remember Freddy Krueger? Yeah. Uh, Y'all remember Nightmare F Street? Yeah, and then all of a sudden he had this one time he had killed all them folks and he opened his body up and everybody was crying out. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's what happens with us. When you open your spirit up and you and you don't get rid of that stuff, men and women, you open your spirit up and, and that's what you got all those souls in you. Mm -hmm. So when you get married and you don't detox or you get into, let me say this too, because let me say this, everybody ain't getting married, y'all. Let me say this. So if you go into a relationship too, because we got people that ain't just in church on here. When you right. go into a relationship and you go and have sex, you take all of those people that you have sex with and you bring them to all the people they didn't have sex with. And mm -hmm. now you got a big old knot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you got to do. You can't do nothing. But because so now you got all these spirits that y'all in, in, in one room together. Anyway. Well, that's good. That's good right there. Anything else you want to uh, throw in on this old task? Um, and, and like I said, the only way you can do a detox cut, but uh, soul ties, and then that's why this is another thing too with soul ties. You can't be productive or even free in another relationship or marriage until you cut them. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you take those spirits with you over to each relationship with the soul ties. 
and uh and 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 and, and, and it affects their relationship because you, you never got rid of it. So you know, uh they travel with you, man. They like, you know what I'm saying? They like, you no, know, we pick up and go. They like motel eight, motel six, they leave the light on. <laughs> we going wherever you're going. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the with, with soul ties is so deep because even with this too, when you date, you when you don't get rid of them, you size that man or woman up to what you used to. Mm -hmm. So if it's sexual, you compare it to it. If it's emotional, you compare it to it. And if they don't do what the other person do, you compare it to it. Mm -hmm. Because your spirit is still tied to them. Mm -hmm. So you have some comparison. But when you clean yourself out, you don't have no comparison. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the thing is, you know, that's why a lot of women can't, they can have a good, I've seen the time, I'm telling you, I've been hurt y'all too now. And if I hurt too, I've hurt too. No, let me get to it. But I've been hurt too, where I really wanted a woman, but she was emotionally tied to another man. Mm. But they had been broke up. So I'm fighting two people. Right. I'm fighting her and I'm competing against him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. she's still tied to him and he gone, he long gone. I had a, a, a situation. I look, my like this girl, man. She was cool. She was a teacher. Man, we vibe, we laugh, we trip, she giggled. And man, you know, I man, I had met her at the bottom. It was some years ago. I met at the bottom shop, man. And I, I had, I, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm, you know, we went out. It was five years. I was still chasing her. Every now and then, you know, I still have my stuff going on. But I finally got her. I was like, oh, this is it right here. Yeah. So, you know, I got her. And man, it was, she had broke over dude, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, man, we was going good. She got a text message. And from that text message, you know, he had said he he wasn't ready. And, and she got a conversation with me. was like, well, I don't, you know, we want to try to see if I can work it out. You know, me being a man, I'm like, you know, I'm trying to put my macho thing. You know, I'm, I'm happy for you. I want you to do, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, want you to, I want you to see what's best for you. But at the same time, I wanna, I'm telling her, you know, I still love you too, though. You know, don't go. To, but she needed to experience that mm -hmm. because she wasn't going to be no good for me. Right. Because right. she still was over there. Mm -hmm. So I had to let it go. It hurt me, but I had to let it go. And then it still didn't, you know, later on it didn't work out, but, you know, just here or there. But so that's it. Well, thank you, Pastor Courtney, for your segment. I'm, I'm going to ask you to stay around as well uh, for the end of the dating game. We're going to move on to uh, Darielle on the uh, Millennials. Hey, Darielle. Hey. You ready for your segment, honey? I'm ready. I really appreciate you uh, again for uh, joining us on tonight. Um, but first, I want to ask, uh, how is how is it dating as a millennial? How difficult is it, especially by trying to do it God's way? Trying to do it God's way, um, day nowadays can be very difficult sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are experiencing pressure from both society and even in the church. Mm -hmm. um, the pressure from the society, being that Christianity, one, is already countercultural, dating is countercultural. And so pressure from society, you have just stayed around, you know, just have mm -hmm. fun. And it's almost like dating for an immediate pleasure and dating, you know, for the sake of it because you feel lonely. And then, mm -hmm. then you have unhealthy people connecting with other unhealthy people and it's forming these toxic bonds. And so mm -hmm. um, you feel that pressure of, you know, you just, you have to date around, like just mm -hmm. casually, don't take it too seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and then for, you know, dating as a Christian, you date with some like two um, factors, like you dating with purpose, one, and then you also dating with the awareness of, uh, the presence of God in your relationship. So um, with the presence of God, you know, you're, he's speaking to you, um, you're being led by his voice. Mm -hmm. um, and so you also have the pressures of the, even the physical aspects. Like I need to have sex with this person because I need to know, like, are we really going to connect in that way? And then even living with them, like you need to live with them in order to know if y'all will be able to uh, be married together. And so mm -hmm. you have that pressure coming on you. Mm -hmm. And then um, from the church, you have, at least in my experience, you have the pressure on you um, to feel like you need to be all together before you can even begin dating. 
Um, I know us women, we get the Proverbs 31 woman narrative pushed in our face a lot. Um, and, and sometimes it can be taken to an extreme Whereas it feels as though I need to be, I need to possess all of these characteristics in order to be dating. Um, and if I don't have this or this, then, you know, I'm not good enough for dating. And granted, you do need to have certain things um, that's foundational before you even begin dating. Like you need to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And then you also need to be content in yourself. You need to be satisfied. And I feel like you need a person to, you know, complete you and feel validated. Um, but those are the foundational things, some of the foundational things, but um, you feel this pressure that if I don't have it all together, then this must not be for me. And so you got these pressures that's on you, which I feel creates unnecessary stressors um, while trying to navigate this whole dating realm in the, it to begin with, so. Oh, that's real good, that's real good. So uh, I got another question. I know you, uh, you spoke briefly on it, Mm -hmm. But um, why do millennials believe in giving wifey privileges, but only have a girlfriend status? Hmm. Well, well, first, I believe you have to look at the lines have been blurred um, between what is considered a privilege in and outside of a marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and you also have the fact that a lot of people um, nowadays don't even see the point in marriage. And so because of these, because of these two, you see this dynamic happening where, you know, women giving away wifey privileges to men who are not their husbands. And then you also, on the other end, you have women out here who will, um, who, who feel the need that I need to show this man that, I, that I'm wifey material. Um, and, you know, if I can show him this, then he'll make that commitment. But then if he don't, you know, you're left feeling lonely, depressed, hurt and all of these things you feel depleted and then you constantly pouring yourself out in this manner to the to different men hoping somebody will make that commitment and um and then they don't then you know you're left um uh, with with this uh area of brokenness and i think that also goes into an uh, area of a lack of boundaries um uh, within the relationship so yeah i think that's why we see oftentimes um people giving away these wifey privileges to people and, or men who are not their husbands. Oh, that was real good there, you do, you is impressing me, I swear. You are doing really good. So uh, another question, do you think uh, that marriage in the millennial age, is it, is it on the target for you guys or is it just, you guys just believe in just, you know, the, the old term of shacking? <laughs> Um, well, personally, I think that there is a large majority of millennials who still believe in marriage. Um, I think what we see nowadays is that the uh, the numbers are slowing down because millennials are taking longer to get married. Um, you know, want to get career goals out of the way or personal goals or, you know, we want to um, pay off certain debts or get our finances together. And so, I believe that um, we still have that view of marriage, but um, compared to the older generation, our, our numbers are slowing down um, due to the fact that we are waiting a bit longer to uh, get married. And I think that's also because of things that we may have seen um, growing up with the different marriages and relationships. Um, and we, you know, we wanna be a bit more cautious when it comes to uh, the institution of marriage. Um, and, but then you do, uh, like I said, you have that percentage of millennials who, who don't see the point in marriage. You know, they feel that the institution, uh, the philosophies of the system is just uh, over, it's overhyped. And, you know, you have the mindset of like, I don't need the government, you know, to sign off saying right. I'm, I'm married. Mm -hmm. So you also see that um, plan as to the numbers, I guess, shifting when it comes to millennials and marriage. But I feel like majority um, of millennials still do have in mind the aim to get married. It's just looked a little bit, the numbers look a little bit lower being that it's taking a little bit longer. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, another question, uh, do, do millennials believe in deal breakers? And if so, what are some of them? Most definitely, most definitely. I feel that uh, a lot of us, we know what we don't want. 
And so uh, being that we know what we don't want, it creates these deal breakers. And so um, just to name a few, you know, personal hygiene, you have bad hygiene, that's, that's just- oh, Well, that's on my list and I ain't, I ain't no millennial, so you can yeah, have some bad that's, hygiene, that's, we can't talk. No, it's like, <laughs> go the way. Um, um, you have a deal breaker of people, you don't want anyone who's uh, narcissistic or who is conceited, someone who, I know personally for me, uh, if you lack vision for yourself, um, mm -hmm. if you lack interest or, you know, you lack showing genuineness and um, you you showing that you are untrustworthy or unfaithful. Um, and then you also have on the other end, some deal breakers where people won't date outside of their racial or ethnic backgrounds or their um, socioeconomic status. Um, and so, Across the board, I, I believe we do still believe in deal breakers and um, yeah, we, we, hold, we hold firm to those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool beans. Last question. Why do you believe situational, ship, situational ships are more acceptable in today's society, hmm. especially with the millennials? Honestly, I believe that it's because it's seemingly easier. Um, you know, you don't you have people who don't want the demands or the commitment or the work that it takes to be in a relationship or a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you don't want to deal with these commitments or deal with the work that it takes, um, you see these situationships happening. And then, like mentioned before, you see um people with a lack of knowledge of their value and of their worth. And so they settle just for anything, you know, just to say, I have somebody or, mm -hmm. you know, just to say like, I'm not lonely. I can still keep up with the Joneses. I can still, you know, participate and be relevant in conversations. And so I believe that um, because of the, the lack of commitment or uh, wanting to put up with the demand and work through having a relationship or a healthy relationship as well as the lack of knowledge of value and worth um, that I believe that's why we see more often today these um, situationships. Mm. And, yep. and situational ship is not only in your actual uh, age bracket but it's actually in our age bracket as well. I mean, sometimes we call it friends with benefits, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, a lot of people I've, I've accepted sometimes, you know, friends with benefits because mm -hmm. not because that's what or that's because that's what I wanted. You know, I wasn't ready for a relationship and a commitment. And then, you know, I was uh, protecting my children. So sometimes I didn't want to be in a relationship. So I would have friends with benefits. Mm -hmm. Not saying that was cool, but, you know, sometimes we dummy ourselves down to that. Mm -hmm. And that's not just necessarily uh, what you need to do because that leaves you broken. That leaves you with soul ties, as Pastor Courtney said. That leaves you with emotional issues, you know, as well. So, you know, I have that deal breaker too. So, you know, I don't really deal with situational ship. I try to teach a lot of people, especially some some uh, young girls on my job. You know, they talk about situational ships, but they know they have another person on the other side. You know, they know they have a a uh, girlfriend or 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 are they really serious about something and they only come into you when they want something. You see what I'm saying? And you know what they want sex. They that's probably nine times a ten what they want. Okay. And they you are willing to accept it. So I really enjoyed your segment, Derriere. And you just you just blew me out the water, girl. So you know I already told you that this is only the beginning. This is only the, the beginning, so get ready. Get ready, okay? So you Thank hang you. out to uh, um, pulling up uh, Tiffany so we can talk about her Rachel and Leah concept. Hi, Tiffany. Hey, ma'am, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. So how, so how have you been enjoying since you're the last panelist? on here um i have I have, been. I have thoroughly enjoyed and i've been commenting um but i thoroughly enjoyed the conversation thus far so it's really been good it's really really good. enlightening really pastor courtney was good uh darielle which we affectionately call brie 
So it's kind of hard for me to keep saying Darielle because we, we call her Bri at, at church. And then then Kaylin call her Banana Ramble or something. She call her something. But something, I don't know what Kaylin call her. And, uh, you know, and Tasha was really good. So, I mean, that was your turn. So a lot of people on today about this Rachel and Leah concept that we always talk about. Okay. We have a lot of behind the scenes discussion, y'all. So, um, Rachel and Leah, let me give you a little background that I'm going to debate Rachel and Leah. I grew up in a household where my household could have been Rachel and Leah. It was, um, it was featured every day. It was accepted every day. It was the lifestyle every day. And so with Rachel and Leah, Rachel and Leah were two sisters that were given to a man for the, for, that were given to Jacob um, in the Bible. And so they were taught, it was an undercurrent for them. They were taught um, how to be jealous. They were taught how to have sibling rivalry. They were taught how to willingly share a man. They were taught um, how to desire love, even though they didn't know what love was. They were taught um, how to not really understand who they were as a woman. And so, but they were also taught to chase and pursue at any cost and at any means necessary. And so it was okay to share. It was okay to, uh, for us to be in the same vicinity. It was okay for us to know about each other. It was okay um, for us to have children. It was okay for me to have a child and you to have a child and me to have a child and you to have a child and compete for a man's attention, but not really being able to captivate his heart at the same time. Um, and so with going into that, I kind of grew up in it, in that kind of situation. My father, it's 16 of us. My father was married. My mom was in the, 16? yeah, it was 16 of us. Ooh, My really? father was married, um, to two of his four, uh, baby mamas and three of them knew about each other at the same time. We stayed at each other's house, Rachel and Leah. We spent, you know, we spent the night. We were with each other all the time. And we saw our parents behind the scenes, even though we were younger. We saw them behind the scenes. Um, as we were becoming young men and young women, we didn't know if that was the, the, the correct path to take. We didn't know if that was the correct path for us to mimic or for us to model. And looking at Rachel and Leah, they were 14 years old when they were given to uh, Jacob. They didn't understand what a real relationship was, what a real woman was, what mm -hmm. um, what womanhood really was. And so going into that, everybody in my family was like this. And so I thought, okay, it's okay. I can, you know, should I do this? Should I be like this? Um, should I even desire a man like this? And I had to tell my mom one day and she took it a little disrespectful. Uh, as a little disrespectful, I told her, I said, I love you. But because of everything that you've gone through and everything that I've seen, I'm able to become the woman that I am now because of the things that I knew that I would not take or mm -hmm. who I would not become and what I did not desire to have. And so my, through that process, myself and my husband have been married 22 years, but through that process, I told myself, I don't know how you stayed. I don't know how we got married. Um, and, and he saw all of this. He saw it from, you know, We've been together since, technically, since I was 14, 13, 14 years old. And so we've had people in between. And, you know, before we got married, I got married at 17. But even, mm -hmm. you know, had my own house, had my own, you know, paying my own bills, doing my own thing, had my own set of children. Um, and so in a way, I was kind of mimicking what they, what I saw and didn't understand that I was mimicking what I saw, even though he didn't have outside children and I don't have outside children, you know, becoming the young woman that I was supposed to be, that God designed me to be. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I should have been taught, don't date before you are delivered. That's what I should have been taught. I, sh <laughs> I should have been taught, don't be saved at church, but don't have a principal. You know, and mm -hmm. so my father was a deacon. My mom, you know, is an evangelist. And so most definitely, it was, um, it was a difference of church, but it was also, 
it was a delay of maturity because I saw them working in the church. Mm -hmm. And so I was a church baby myself, but I was also a, a growing adult and a grown adult living in my own house. But also, you know, I needed some deliverance from the things that I, I saw within my family. I needed some, you know, I needed some principles that mm -hmm. I had to learn along the way. Um, and I had to say who my family is, I am not. You know, I'm not my history, but you have to know how to break that history in order for you to become the, who you need to become. And so if you never go back, you know, it's just like a soul tie. It's a family tie right now. And so with my family tie, I had to know, let me break this. Let me break this. You know, this will not happen with my children. This will not be passed on to my children. And I had to know that the wrong circles will cause me to have an attack. And so my children had to understand the wrong people that you are around, even if it's family, will cause you to have an attack and you can look like a black sheep and within your family. And I was the only one, maybe for about 15 years, before anybody in my family from my siblings were married. Mm. My husband had the same, you know, same exact thing. He was um, the second oldest of five on his mom's side, but have, I think, five other siblings on his father's side. Mm. First one on his mom's side, married um, mm. for years. But on his father's side, is promoted. But he didn't really see that as a young man. And so we had to learn just different ways. And, it, it, you know, it, it pushed us, but it also carried us, but it also taught us just different things. And so you never, what I was taught through this process and even through Rachel and Leah, you never know what you, uh, you will never know what you need to be delivered from until you introduce to it. Yeah. And so you need to go back into your family genes and into your family history, into your genealogy and see what you need to break, what soul ties you need to break, what family curses you need to break, what emotional curses you need to break because you carry in those things as a young woman and you carry in those things as a wife, as a daughter. You know, I care, I have so many titles, mm -hmm. but the position I carry it's wife and mother. So I have so many other positions that I have. And so you just have to know as a woman what you carry, who you are, and then the audience that you have. Even though I have everybody else around and we have candid conversations, you have to understand who your audience, who's looking when you don't know. And our children definitely don't understand. We don't know that they're looking when they think we are, when they're not. And they're understanding more if we teach them or if we don't. And so those are just things that I learned from Rachel and Leah. And of course, uh, I'm like Minister Courtney. Uh, I have a book that I'm working on, but you know, it'll come out behind, you know, it is due to be released in November of this year. Um, just talking about a few of those concepts and a few things that I've learned. And, uh, and I teach my children these things every day. And so we have, candid conversation between relationships and partnerships and situationships and uh, just if you're going to be a side chick or a side guy. And so I agree uh, with Darielle on a lot of things. So you, you just need to know where you are, where you lie, and what you allow yourself to put up with and deal with. Mm -hmm. That was real good. That was real good. Got a, another question now. We're going to go from the Rachel and Leah concept to side chick. Do you think everybody has been a side chick? Do you think do you think everybody has experienced that? Um, my opinion, I absolutely Your think opinion. that everybody has experienced this. Just two ways that we can look at it now. Um, social media plays a big part in uh, relationships right now. And so when you came on, you had an icebreaker and you say, you know, what's what's our relationship status? And so on on Facebook, it is. Are uh, we single, married, complicated, in between? You can make up your own statuses, just a lot of different things. And I think everybody has been some kind of side. We, I shouldn't have been dating when I was dating. And so, of course, it was a secret relationship. And so with the secret relationship, I was a side because the person who was in the front, I couldn't be the person in the front because I was a secret. Mm. And so if you are a secret, you shouldn't be in a relationship anyway. But if you're okay with it, then you are a side. And I, you know, I don't want to be, I want to be the main course. 
And so side chicks are like, you know, the mashed potatoes or the green beans. You can, you can switch, you know, those are interchangeable. You can switch those up. I, well, tell, can, I tell me and all the time, I'm the entree. I ain't, I ain't no side. I ain't, I'm not side. I'm yeah, like, so I just think, like the meat. I just think everybody, you know, has been a side on some, some way in their life. And if they, if they say they haven't, it's because you are with your mate for the first time. And they're with you for the first time. That's the only reason. Other than that, if we were just dating and we went through the process, like uh, Minister Courtney said, of the interview process, if they have been sexually active and they've been waiting on you, um, they're waiting on you, but they are active with somebody else. So it's the level of your availability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we always had this conversation about side chick day. Like at the day after Valentine's Day, they always talk about Happy Sad Chick Day, and then like that just like boils me. I'll be like, like why why do we just do that? Like the day after Valentine's Day, be like Happy Sad Chick Day. I tell you know I tell people all the time that nine times out of ten the side chick already got what the man has already given her before before the wifey has, mm -hmm. right? So that's my that's my thing. So uh, I just don't like that. It's just like, you know, because I, I have I have been a side chick before, you know, that's just, just going toward what I was talking to Bree about, but, you know, situational shifts. And I, but I meant to ask Cord, uh, Pastor Courtney about hidden and secret relationships. So I'm going to get him back on here so he can answer that. But I've been a, in a secret relationship. I've been in a church where I was a secret they didn't mm -hmm. date the musician and I was a secret. He was like, Shh, we don't want to tell nobody about our relationship. And then figuring out that I wasn't the only one. But my but friend, you, he wound up dating a friend of mine. And you know why we didn't know. The only one and why he wanted to keep it the game is because right. he had more faith in who you were going to become and he wanted to be able to hold you back on who you were going to become, but he wasn't ready for who you were going to be for him. And so mm. he didn't want you to be that for anybody else. Mm. And so I can hold greatness back if you don't see it. Mm -hmm. And so you mm. need to be able to see it. And sometimes That's you don't see it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't see it. Mm -hmm. And so right now we have, you know, pressure from the culture to have um, nameless situations. And I, you know, I talk to my children about this all the time. And mm -hmm. so, um, they say, well, you know what? I don't really want to let people know who I'm dating. I don't really want to put them out there. I don't really want to whatever, you know. And so I have to say, well, let me, let me, let me take a picture of you and let me, you know, post it to social media because social media tell on everybody. And so this is my way of telling you that I saw who you were dating and you weren't listening to what I was saying when people comment up under the comments. And mm -hmm. so you cannot anything that's a secret shouldn't be dealt with anyway and mm -hmm. so if you have to be a secret i don't care if it's a secret you're getting a gift on your secret holiday i mm -hmm. didn't you know i see somebody say sad chicks don't get holidays and you know That's your brother said sad chicks don't get holidays. <laughs> absolute <laughs> lie and so they get great trips they get rent paid they get um light bill paid. paid they get the paid. bank accounts no, they, they have the cards money. that they can slide they have all of that and so i think sometimes the side chick is the main chick and the wife that's at home is the side mm -mm. that's just me watch out you didn't say the word girl you can see that some people ain't gonna like that right there you don't have to like what i'm saying but it's the truth we transparent tonight we are transparent we are transparent do you believe that the side chick mentality, you do you think that's like a generational curse? I do. Um, because if I would have, I'm just using me, if I would have continued to go in the path that I saw, and you know, praise God, my mom, you know, was married and delivered and all of this other stuff. And so she learned along the way, and we've had a conversation to say, Tiffany, I understand what you were talking about then, but I took it, you know, as a little hurtful then, but I understand now. And so I definitely know that the side chick mentality is taught and it's a, it's a generational curse. And mm -hmm. so if you don't break it, who will? And if you don't, if you don't break it, who will? And if you don't begin to look at it, who's going to look at it? But if you don't call out and expose the things that's in you that haven't manifested yet, 
-hmm. when you walk into it, you won't know how to handle it. We got one of my viewers says that it sounds like a sugar daddy. I guess that's what the men are called. The men are called sugar daddies. The women are called the side chicks. What you think? <laughs> sugar daddies are, you know, how you on this topic? Okay. Sugar daddies <laughs> are so that, you know, for our day, you know, Darielle, you know, those were <laughs> older guys who were taking care of younger women. And those are still today. But you have a lot of young guys who like cougars. Right. And so they are willing to, they willing to get up under your feet and be taught. Mm. But they're also willing to learn, really willing to look at what you have. But also I look at Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon. Mm -hmm. She's such a cougar cool for him. He gave her, you know, two children. That's what she wanted. Their marriage didn't last, but he also told her, I won't get married to anybody else. He won't commit to anybody else on the level that he committed to her on. Mm -hmm. that level was only meant for her it wasn't meant for anybody else he has children with two other women i think but their their relationship is strictly sexual so they have nameless sex and nameless commitments with no kind of real relationship um behind it and so that's absolutely wrong and so you don't have any benefits you don't have anything to hold you except I'm dating somebody and guess what? You a secret because nobody knows until somebody found out that you leaked your picture that you were pregnant or you were with them. Get out mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. one, of, uh, one of the viewers, Tyra said, the first side chick in the Bible was Hagar. She absolutely was. But absolutely. guess what? She was brought in and that was the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But the New Testament, you can't find Hagar, okay? Find her. The Old <laughs> Testament, Sarah didn't want to wait. And so she, she said, said, hey, hey, here you go. Sarah didn't want to wait. And so since she didn't want to wait, she brought another woman in, which right now we call a threesome. Right. And so when you bring somebody <laughs> else in, <laughs> when, you bring, <laughs> when you bring somebody else in, um, they don't supposed to run their mouth. Mm -hmm. Hagar ran her mouth, but she still had to go back and submit to this woman. Mm -hmm, who mm -hmm. she wanted to run her mouth about who gave her the opportunity yep. to step into the limelight and yep. so i just think you know even with side chicks right now we have a, a show on tv called side chicks of north carolina or something it's like a real housewife show and so i was like when did side chicks start speaking up so much or you know they gonna lose all their perks but i saw that the wives we're like, I'm going to do anything I can to keep my man because it's the woman fault, but we never place the blame on a man at all. But mm -hmm. we never place the blame on ourselves either. Mm -mm. You're absolutely right. But I ain't got a thing that went down. We didn't have so much good conversation. I ran out of battery. But anyway, uh, now I know you gave me this question, the, a millennial question, and we're going to go and go there. So, uh, you know, a millennial in, inboxed you, right? Uh huh. And uh -huh. asked you this question. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And we wanted to wait till we we uh got on to the live to answer this question. However, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna see if anybody else want to answer it as well. But it's saying is having oral sex the same as actually having sexual intercourse? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. I see you. I wish they could see your face. Um, I think, okay, if it's done in the confines of your marriage bed. You ain't married. It's not the sin because the marriage bed is defiled. But if you are not married and you out here giving somebody a pleasure that was meant for your significant other with the ring, with the paperwork, with the covenant. That's a, that's one of the biggest soul ties there is. Well, you know, some people think that if they're not having the sexual intercourse, that that's not, that's not actually having sex. If that's the case, we can get the, these toys out our drawers that most of us have. Well, I don't have a toy. Uh, oh. <laughs> But, but I absolutely think, I absolutely know that the marriage bed is undefined, absolutely. but that's the marriage bed. But how many people are you married to? Because mm -hmm. in the old testament, you know, you jumping in and out of bed. And even right now today, you jumping in and out of bed, having casual, nameless sex with whoever. And 
how many of those people are you carrying along with you? The question is not even about oral sex. It's about who giving it to you if you out here and you single and you getting it. And so who was the last person that gave it to you? Were you thinking about this other person and this other person is right here doing this for you? How many ties do you have not to the top of you, but to the bottom of you? That's the question. Mm. Mm. Child, you have opened up a can of worms tonight. You have did something real good. Pastor Courtney, I know, I see you want to answer. Let's see, let's, let's, let's let Pastor Courtney answer this question right quick. Come on, Pastor Courtney, what you got to say? She said it's oral sex. <laughs> uh, see, now, I'm going to tell you how it is. Some people don't think that. That's some I'm people, That because I've known, uh, you know, I've known people, you know, confide in me about, hey, I don't have sex. They're a virgin or they, let me say this, they either do anal or they do Ooh, four. Four. Five, because four. they feel like, I'm just telling you, uh, because they, I'm sorry, y'all, but <laughs> this is true. <laughs> So, but uh, y'all want to put me back on mute. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they don't think that all sex is a problem because they're not entering into the sacred place. You know what I'm saying? They're not having it. So they like, I'm still a virgin. I'm still, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gave away my husband. Uh, and I had this conversation with a lady and she was like, well, I never had sex, but I've done oral. That's it. I said, well, you had sex. No, that's not sex. And they strongly believed it because they don't. But they don't understand is <laughs> you still getting the spirit just in a different way. <laughs> so at the end of the day is because we don't get deep and talk about that. And uh right. and uh so that but that's it's sex and it, it, all of it's sex. And, and I but I believe, like you said, the bedroom is undefiled when you marry. But you know, like millennials, man, millennials now, but I don't they don't think that, you know, that some of them, not all of them, not some of them don't think that. And even older, you'll believe older people like us too. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. man? And when I was when I was coming up and I was in the world, y'all, <laughs> and a woman, she'd be like, "I do this, but I ain't gonna do that." But I like with me, I say, I, "You can't give me one without the other." It's like one and two. You know what I'm saying? It's peanut butter and jelly. They gotta stick together. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just look. <laughs> so I'm just saying, just what they think. But it's 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 not right, you know what I'm saying? I want to clarify something too. Give me a give me this 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 real quick. Somebody said something about dating while being separated. I want to answer the question. The only reason I say about dating while separated because the only and I say this because it's sin when you have sex. You don't supposed to be having sex with nobody anyway, unless you're married. Mm -hmm. So if I date you and getting to know you while you separate and you are clear now, it's it's a different because as long as you clear of your uh, your emotions, you clear, and you saying I'm moving on. I'm not talking like, like I clarified it. As long as they're not fresh out of it, I think it's okay because you friends. But because how you going to date somebody you never friends first anyway? That's right. You, know, you got to be friends anyway. Mm -hmm. So if I'm dating you, and let's say it take three or four years before you get divorced, or maybe we pray through, and I say, hey, I'm gonna be your prayer partner. We're not gonna do nothing, but I still like you. I'm still, I'm still want to date you. So at the end of the day, is I'm gonna help you get through this process. And mm -hmm. I think people. Church people have come so closed minded because we still got to help people get through situations. And it's and, and I don't know where we get this idea that people can't be opposite sex, can be can't be friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to be dating. I tell my daughter, you could be opposite, you could be friends with opposite sex and not never sleep with nobody That's or right. never have the mm -hmm. conversation. Because guess what? I, I want me, I want some friends as women so y'all can put me up on game. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe <laughs> if I had more women friends, I'd have been mad by now because y'all gave me y'all secrets. But anyway, go ahead. I'm, I'm out the way. I'm back on mute. Wait, wait a minute. Uh-uh. I got one more question because my pastor, Pastor Devin, then put one in the chat box down here. He said, what advantage of your relationship with Christ do you believe assists in Christian dating? Well, I was going to say something about that uh, because I, did, I didn't see, I didn't know how to date. And I didn't have a dad that taught me how to date. My dad was in my life. I didn't know how to be an, I didn't have an example. I didn't know how to treat a woman. I didn't know how to respect a woman. I didn't know how to respect her emotions or heart or opinion. I was dogmatic and chauvinistic. My benefit was that God showed me myself and showed me how to date, showed me how to respect love and value through my Christian, you know, experience with him. 
So he taught me in a sense through my daughters, through my through my mom. Man, my mama went through cancer. And, you know, we say to death do us part, and she's her second round of cancer. I had to, man, literally take our work, take care of my mama. And I was like, man, if I could take care of my mama and do all this stuff, man, it's going to be a piece of cake for my wife because I ain't get no benefits behind this. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The least I could get a little benefit with my wife, you know what I'm saying? But, 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 but I had to learn. So God showed me myself. And then he showed me that, hey, you can't be showing this. You can't, it can't be your way. You can't always be dogmatic or be that because you're an alpha male. You can just over talk a person and don't let them be free to, to, to be themselves. And you got to recreate this. Cause I always try to recreate a woman. Like I want to, you know, I get up, I'm like a uh, Mr. Potato Head with a woman. I'm trying to fix her up for me, but it's not, it's not let her be herself. If she short hair, she, you know, she got a little weight on her. She got this going on, man. I love her the way she is because that's who God created her to be. And hopefully she do sign to me, but being a, being with God, show me how to be a man and how to date a woman the right way and it ain't all about sex because i'm gonna tell you something because that's the first thing i'm my first conversation we have listen what's up what you, you know what i'm saying what's going on what you doing you know what i'm saying because that's that's the mindset we hunters and women don't realize it i'm gonna tell y'all this no man i don't care if he's gay straight black white pink purple saved unsaved crazy dumb deaf he gonna want to have sex one point of time when y'all talk I tell people that because, but we got to learn how to, to channel that energy somewhere else. And then you're able to bring those conversations back later on. Mm -hmm. So Christian taught me, God taught me how to be a man. God taught me how to date. God taught me, and I'm still working on it. God taught me how to treat a woman. God taught me how to respect a woman. So I'm glad that God, and they say God really raised me. I can really say that God raised me and I was raised by him uh, far as. And so my Christian experience has, Man, taught me how to be a great dad, taught me how to be a, a, a better person. And now I believe that when the time comes, I can be, I'll be great prepared, not just on the outside, but the inside emotionally and tapping into her emotions and not just mine and being selfish uh, from that. All right. All right. I want to thank you guys um, for all you guys' insight and, and everything y'all did on tonight. Um, I want to just wrap it up. Uh, we've been on here almost two hours. I mean, time really flew past before I knew it. It's, it's two hours. So, but what I, hold on, I got a message. So what I want, what I want to do tonight, I just want to wrap it up. Uh, at the end of the day, with all the questions and the answers that we did, bottom line is that you need to ask yourself, this is to my audience, this is to my panelists, is my dating or, or relationship pleasing to God? And I do know that everyone is not on the same path. We do know that everybody's not uh, trying to date God's way. They trying, they just trying to do what they want to do, right? But however, to those that, that are probably need to ask yourself, would your witness be destroy, destroyed if people could see your DMs and your text messages? Now, again, we know we all have our own issues. We, are, we all have our own proclivities. We are imperfect people striving for perfection in an imperfect world, right? So Miles Monroe said this. He stated something that was very good. He stated that divorce doesn't happen when the papers are signed. Divorce happens in the heart. So you can get, you can have your paper signed and you say that you divorce and you never but you never divorce in your heart. Okay. So I read a quote uh, the other day also that said women glow differently when they are loved properly. And men grind differently when they are loved properly. Proper love produces proper results. And that's what I really wanted to to uh to get to gain here, that was my goal on today. To, un, to for people to understand that proper proper love produces proper results. So I don't want to end the Zoom tonight without praying for each and everyone, anybody that's uh, uh, on the Zoom or uh, on Facebook Live. I want to also offer Christ to them. Okay, you know it's, it's easy as ABCs. We always say that 
No, Romans 10 and 9 states, if you uh, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that uh, God has raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. You can, uh, A, you can accept Jesus as your personal savior. B, you just believe that he died for your sin and rose again with all power so that you can have the opportunity to commune with your father. And then you have C, you, you can make your confession known. So I just wanted to make sure that I wanted to go through that and I wanted to thank everybody for joining in on tonight. And I took up most of, most of you guys Sunday night, but I really appreciate the support. I really appreciate my panelists joining in and y'all was amazing from, the, from Tasha to Courtney to, uh, to Bree to Tiffany. Y'all all rock tonight and I really appreciate you. Uh, also, um, if anybody would like to sow into this ministry, uh, these men and women did not did not ask me for anything, but I would love to sow into them because they did offer nuggets, they offer wisdom, and you know you can't you can't buy that all this free wisdom and all this free knowledge. So if you have a I have a cash app, so cash app is dollar sign Toya Spencer, PayPal is PayPal.me uh, forward slash uh, T S Ministries two. TS Ministries 2 at PayPal. I really want to put some uh, something in their hands, something in their pockets, uh, at least buy them uh, lunch or dinner, you know, at least uh, something, you know. So I appreciate you guys for joining in tonight. Uh, I thank you. I'm going to uh, go ahead and end the live now. Panelists, if you just would just stay on for